I'll, let me describe the content of uh, this. This is slightly different. Create a, it's a 25 second animation, kind of like The Last Dancing. But in this one, it's going to be a little more difficult to do cycles. Um, this is going to be probably the, your best effort taking all the tools and techniques and media experience that you've accumulated so far in the class and putting it into a acting animation where you have at least two characters and you have a dialogue, okay? So um, you can use any medium you like, 2D or 3D. I have the usual suspects of rigs here if you want to use those as a link. Um, so keeping it as general as possible, the theme is the argument. So you can start by researching film, TV, um, Netflix shows, anything that comes up on a YouTube search of uh, your favorite show, something from uh, memorable from a show that you like, or just a piece of conversation that becomes heated, building up between two characters, an escalated subject. When I say argument, it doesn't need to be two individuals screaming at each other either. It could be something kind of subtle because of the way two people might have a conversation that sounds droll or sarcastic or um, dark. Maybe they're having a cold war between two characters. Maybe it's in a character sitting down at a restaurant table and having a uh, a very cold conversation with each other after a long relationship and it's it's turned sour and they're saying just very snippy, snide things to each other back and forth. Or it could be a kind of a low grade conversation of everyday talking and one voice starts to take offense or trigger over another. Or it could be two characters screaming at each other. So it's a wide interpretation of what the argument can be. So um, I'm going to give, show you student work, examples of this. But first, I'm going to take a step back, talk a little bit about the practicals of this assignment. Um, going back to the assignment level on Canvas. Um, just going to talk about a couple of things. Um, so uh, let's see, project seven, the argument. Um, I'm saying it's due December 10th. Now we're going to have our final the week after that. No? Mm -hmm. Our final is December 17th on a Friday. So the plan is this, that you could deliver this on December 10th, 2 p.m., up to 20 points. So this is highest greatest assignment. Now it's showing what I'm looking for in those assignments. And then what I would like to do, would like you to do, and what we're going to show on finals day, December 17th, oh, 16th, right? Not 17th. We're going to show on December 16th um, all of your, <coughs> just going to cut everything you did in the class into one comp, one reel. Just title, don't need to be fancy, the, the typography. Just the title of the project could be Olympic action, futility, you know, um, time zero, etc. All the way to the argument and cut that into one final compilation and turn that in and we're going to watch that on the final scene. We're going to watch all your work. We're going to see how much you've improved. Also, you'll have that extra week to work on the argument if you want to work on it a little bit more or if you want to take any old assignment and resubmit it. Okay, so you have that extra buffer that you can find after December 10th to work on it. So that's the time structure. And I'll talk, as it gets closer, I'll talk more about the final compilation, what's expected out of that. Okay. <clears throat> so back to the assignment specs. Um, here is what I'm looking for when I evaluate this in the rubric. Um, it's going to be a lot of criteria items. All the things I've mentioned before are all clustering together here. 
And they're going to sound similar to those 12 animation principles, but not that many. These are the important things I'm going to look for in your final argument animation between two acting characters. Um, I'm going to expect that there's mouth movement, lip sync, that you have a dialogue between two that's going to be balanced between these two characters. That um, it, if it's 2D or 3D, I'm going to expect there to be facial expression, lip sync, the lips are moving. There's no minimum or maximum amount of words, but you can present to me what research, what kind of dialogue you're thinking of before you begin. With the criteria of the evaluation, um, I'm going to be balancing the points between these criteria columns. Uh, anticipation and follow through. Pose appeal. Clarity of concept. Um, now what is that? How clear the concept given for the assignment was communicated in your animation. Um, how clear the dialogue is meshing with the body language of the characters. Is it communicating with exceptional clarity? Technical completion, as always. I know we can run out of time. And we have an extra week, if it's necessary, to finish. Um, so technical level of completion of animation and quality of life. Timing, this is kind of general timing, speed of actions, rhythms, or holds used in animation. Staging, <clears throat> the effective arrangement of elements, all that stuff we talked about staging and on the midterm quiz. And arcs. This is the one I think everybody can work on. What you'd like to see more of. Arcs are not just the um, travel or path of objects through a scene, like a bouncing ball arc. That's a travel trajectory arc. But it's also arcs in the arms and legs of the character. So if you have a hand coming in the screen, from off screen, does it come in on a straight line like a robot, or does it come in on an arc? And I just draw, without even paying attention, my elbow joint is going to create an arc. If I negate my elbow and just move from my shoulder, that's going to also create an arc. So when you have internal parts of the characters acting, you are going to try to, as much as you can, have an invisible arc that that wrist follows through, or that arm follows through. This is going to naturally happen on a jointed figure, but does not naturally happen in the drawing. It does not naturally happen when you have a 3D rig because of the IK on the hands and stuff. It can go in a very robotic fashion and not look very natural unless you directly rotate the joints, but we won't get into that detail now. Just make sure 2D or 3D animation that you are drawing your arcs in the internal and external parts of the character before you animate. So that feels more natural. That's something we should get into the meta, let's say, nature, the invisible and virtual nature that envelops every character in the space they're occupying. How does a character move in a space, even take a step from left to right? Even if a character is yelling at another character and maybe pointing or pounding their fist, you know, you did this or you, that hand is coming down in an arc. And what I'd be liking to see is the feeling of a really exaggerated arc of any excited or thrashing or um, animated limb movement, and as well as a character might take a step from the left to the right. My hips are traveling along a trajectory arc. So this is what I hope I'm getting the most advanced experience at at this point in the class, is using and understanding arcs. Okay, let's look at some examples in the past. I've got a ton of uh, argument animations from students. Quite a variety. Because I have good news. What? Amy Brandt, the casting director. Yeah. She was at your play, and she loved it. And she loved it so much that she wants you to come in tomorrow and audition for this huge movie that she's got. I'm not going to that. I'm not going to that. What? That one's going to be, you know, 
<laughs> okay, was that an argument? Um, you know, I'm we rule it out whether we accept the definition or the concept of an argument. But when he slammed his hand down, he kind of let you know, so arguments can be surprising or complex. I mean, you have to make sense. If you want me to be quiet, you have to make some goddamn sense. You tell me why they're you're gonna not going. They're going to call because, because why? I've been to a million auditions, and the same thing happens every time, where I get interrupted because someone wants to get a sandwich, or I'm crying. It's happening in two phases, and I'm glad I'm showing you this one. There's no lip sync yet. When we looked at the Kyle Balda, that's the layered animation technique. This is particularly for 3D animators, CG rigs, to get all the um, body language in with center of gravity of the character, get those um, large muscular motions, then throwing in the secondaries with the hands, then the fingers. Eyes would come very clearly second, if not primary things for communicators. Head can give a lot of body language attitude. And lip sync last. Why is that? Because you could have a character turn around and be speaking, and you're not going to see their lips. You could be like me wearing a mask, but your characters uh, probably are not. Somebody's got that idea. Oh, yeah, let's make them pandemic y. Get them masked and have to do lip sync. But the point is, you should be thinking that way anyway, because lips should be the last thing you do, uh, because the body language is going to give the attitude and the emotion first. And then the very last thing is throwing the lips and the mouth, and it will be all that much stronger. So if we see this, we don't even notice, because we're not staring at someone's <laughs> lips all the time. It would be quite weird. If you did give someone eye contact, and you know, only look at their lips, you're like, what do you look at? Why, why look at them? What do you look at? You know, it's very disconcerting. So did you even notice the lips aren't moving here? I mean, you have to make sense. If you want me to be quiet, you have to make some goddamn sense. You tell me why you're not going. They're going to call the police because, because I've been to a million auditions. And the same thing happens every time where I get interrupted because someone wants to get a sandwich or I'm crying and they start laughing or there's people sitting in the waiting room. So it's really important. You've got really the, post, uh, the pose and the emotion, the hands and the expression before the mouth gets in there. Otherwise, it's going to look like a talking mannequin. So that's a really good sense of phase, whether you're 2D or 3D, 3D or 2D. And they're like me, but prettier and better at the, because maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. No. No, maybe I'm not. Yes, you are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Maybe I'm one of those people that has always wanted to do it, but it's like a pipe dream for me, you know? And then you, you said it, you, you, Change your dreams and then you grow up. Maybe I'm one of those people and I'm not supposed to. And I can go back to school and I can find something else that I'm supposed to do. Because I left to do that and it's been six years and I don't want to do it anymore. Why? Why what? Why don't you want to do it anymore? Because they think it hurts a little bit too much. Okay. Yeah, it turns a lot of corners emotionally. It's like an argument he's trying to help her. So, you know, you can look for dimension in the vocal performance. Really good actors. You know, it's going to help your animation if you start out with a pretty good resource. And now... All right, this got a different angle um, in the same scene, I think, with some lighting. Because I have good news. What? Amy Brandt, the casting director. She was at your play. And she loved it. And she loved it so much that she wants you to come in tomorrow and audition for this <coughs> huge movie that she's got. I'm not going to that. I'm not going to that. 
Nice use of staging here. Now, this is existing movie. Whatever you're getting the reference off of, reinvent it. You know, kind of make it your own. Um, starting the character off with the back turn to us gives a lot of emotional um, statement as is. Uh, we don't even need to see the face. We don't need to see like frontal characters always facing off each other. We have here character doesn't want to engage, so they turn their back. Think about the action and the acting film. Take you know, tape yourself doing this, acting it out, or having a partner help you act out. It's an essential that you get your own reference and re envision whatever your dialogue is into your own. Um, bodies and posture and um, you know filming your own reference is going to be essential for this this sound. Okay. All right, now what are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting for you. I happen to be in the neighborhood. Well, you're always in the neighborhood. And you tell me what right you've got to keep those movers out of this office? Oh, listen, I'm sorry about that. It's just, you know what I thought? I thought you and I should talk alone. You and I have nothing to talk about. Yes, we do, Mr. Franklin. We have something to talk about. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of your partner. What? Now, it's my duty to inform you of your constitutional right. Okay, a couple things to notice here. Really good staging is we don't have to see the face of the character. Again, a character walking away, we see the back, can cause just as much tension. Someone's like, don't walk away from me. My words are hitting the back of your head. We're lacking control of that character. Um, so, look what's happening here with the staging and cut. Low angle. This character at first glance looks like they're in charge, they're in power. Look at the dynamic, the downward diagonal. Okay, the eye, the eye line is dominant, it is oppressive. Okay, so the tables get turned. The seated character seems like your subordinate. You do it here. Well, I'm waiting for you. And again, I'm in the neighborhood. Well, you're always in the neighborhood. See, and you tell me what right you've got to keep those movers out of this office? Oh, listen, I'm sorry about that. It's just, you know what I thought? I thought you and I should talk alone. You and I have nothing to talk about. Yes, we do, Mr. Franklin. There. See what happened. Very powerful with the camera. And this is the student. His name is Todd Ugarte. Mm -hmm. He created this where he's going to have the character stand up. And with that, boom, you turn the tables. The weaker character is now is on playing chess the whole time. They're in control. Now they're looking down. So the table's got to flip it. It's all because of staging. We have something to talk about. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of your partner. Now look, we're looking down at the oh. second character who used to be up. And now we see his back and he's frozen and he's like, got caught. There's a little bit of a head turn, like, huh? Now it's my duty to inform you of your constitutional right so, very nice use of posing and staging in this particular one. Think about that, whether it's 3D or 2D. How you can use the power of <clears throat> staging between. Um, this pose is really different. It has its own kind of inventive cartoon language. Let's, Let's talk about your likes and dislikes. Um, how about your favorite food? What would that be? Oh, milk steak. Mm hmm. What? Milk steak. I'm not putting milk Just steak. Put steak. Just I'm gonna put, put steak. steak and then Don't that put steak, put milk steak. She'll know what it is. No, she won't know what it is, She'll Charlie. Know Nobody what knows is. what that is. No nope. okay, all right. What's your favorite hobby? Uh, magnets. Magnets. Okay, magnets. what like making magnets, collecting magnets, playing get, with magnets. Just magnets. I'm gonna God. put snowboarding. We'll put snowboarding. I don't really right. snowboard. All right. What are some of your likes? Uh ghouls. Son of a bitch. What are you talking about? Yeah, now? funny little green ghouls got what? Like in movies and cartoons? What? Little what? green ghouls, buddy. Don't write ghouls. I'm not. I'm putting yeah. travel. Jesus Christ! What are your dislikes? People's knees. Oh come on, Wrong. dude. Come on. Three kids, one So what's cool about this really inventive? I, I know it plays with the whole sense of consistent volume, but it's within the style of it. I feel inventive, kind of crazy sm uh, smears, and inventive. Um, 
a library of mouth and phoneme forms that are not supposed to prescribe to reality if it's own language. A little bit like South Park mouths too, are exchange or a replacement animation parts of the cutout paper. That's a very fun solution, very inventive to solve a lip syncing problem issue. So we're going to travel. Magnets. Playing with magnets. Just magnets. I'm going to put snowboarding. We'll put snowboarding. Okay. Right. Yeah, just starting out with really um, good, catchy dialogue house. It looks like something I'd see an adult swim. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking All right. Um, how are we doing on time? Okay, 5.13. We're going to keep doing. Um, let's see. Screen. That song. <laughs> I can hum if I want to. I know you can. I'm asking you to stop. Well, if you're asking, then I'll stop. Thank you. Screen. Stop humming that song. I can hum if I want to. No, I know you can. I'm asking you to stop. Well, if you're asking, then I'll stop. Thank you. Could you not smile like that? Now you're asking me to mask my emotions because of how it makes you feel? That I will not do. Seriously. Stop humming, okay? This isn't accounting or wherever the hell you and your little pocket calculator were transferred from. Forensic accounting. Okay, and it's an important part of the job. Yeah, whatever. Stop being so overtly happy about doing shit work, you moron. Hey, guys. <laughs> okay, so coming up with an office scenario that could be created, one can see um, only one's own screen and ping pong me back and forth is a, is a nice staging dynamic. Um, you have a little bit of higher elevation looking down. Maybe that could be exaggerated. So I want to point out, Make sure you put blinks in the characters because they're, um, it does stand out, either 3D or 2D, if the character hasn't blinked in a while. It can have them blink on words and actually do a head tuck a little bit on that word to look a little more natural, especially when a character is getting more heated, uh, more emotional. In respect to uh, the characters, you might think they could be blinking a lot more. I'm asking you to stop. Well, if you're asking, then I'll stop. You know, it be, could be like, I'm asking, oops, wait, I'm asking you to stop. You know, a blink, a slow blink is really, really an emotional conveyor. And a fast blink like that could show anger. And a really slow, it's not a blink, it's a frustration and the hands gesturing and the eyebrows going down. Use that in the facial anatomy to convey emotion is as much important as doing um, gritting teeth or a frowning mouth. The hands also are very in full display of what the face is doing. The hands really echo the emotion of the face. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry that I'm the one thing in your life that isn't perfect. Perfect? You think my life is perfect? Oh, I know your life is perfect. Your perfect job, perfect boyfriend, perfect patient. You worship the ground. You, oh, you honey, you need a serious and bracing reality check if you think my life is perfect. You could just cut me some slack just no, this once, Mom. I am beyond cutting you slack, Anna. But you are not going to the audition. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Why not? Because I said so. Yeah, it's a good start. We definitely need more blinks there, huh? The characters are always seem like eggy eyed and too glassy and open eyes. We need blinks. Your perfect job, perfect boyfriend, perfect face. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy to forget to put blinks in. Those weapons were out there, and I tried to tell you about it, but you didn't listen. None of this would have happened if you had just listened to me. <laughs> if you even cared, you'd actually be here. I did listen, kid. Who do you think called the FBI, huh? Do you know that I was the only one who believed in you? Everyone else said I was crazy to recruit a 14-year-old kid. I'm 15. No, this is where you zip it, all right? The adult is talking. What if somebody had died tonight? 
different story, right? Because that's on you. Have you ever thought about my responsibilities? Oh, Dick, what are you talking about? Have you ever had a single moment's thought about my responsibilities? Have you ever thought for a single solitary moment about my responsibilities to my employers? Has it ever occurred to you that I have agreed to look after the Overlook Hotel until May the 1st? Does it matter to you at all that the owners have placed their complete confidence and trust in me and that I have signed a letter of agreement, a contract? Dracula! Dracula! Hurry! I'm in terrible pain! You gotta suck out the poison! Uh-uh, Dracula don't suck! You're a vampire! Vampires suck! Blood! Nah, see, that's a myth. Dracula scrape with his fangs and lick up the blood. Like this. <laughs> see? Scrape uh, and lick. Uh, The trustees have a few suggestions they would like to submit to you. I think you know what the trustees can do with their suggestions. I don't know what they have to say. It makes no difference anyway. Whatever it is, I'm against it. No matter what it is or who commenced it, I'm against it. This one is sound, like vaudeville is turning into sound cinema films. Um, Horse Feathers, Duck Soup, uh, the Marx Brothers were a troupe that uh, made films and sang together. They're kind of silly comedies. They're almost cartoon characters themselves. So it's uh, sometimes uh, Charlie Chaplin, uh, um, was early silent to, to uh, um, sound films, Buster Keaton, etc., are really great for animation because they have cartoony sense of time and poses. What are we doing? You want to look, look at a few more, or that's enough for today? Yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> it looks like. Show it next time. Um, so I got to a few that I did want to show today, and I'm sure you have some questions. And if you have any dialogue, you're going to be a fun having a scavenger hunt trying to find the perfect sound. Um, I again encourage you to be inventive and to write the script yourself and record it and always for every project film yourself, film reference or have a friend do it. It's going to bring so much more life and realism to the performance. All right, um, have a good, I'll be waiting for you in the inbox questions. Otherwise, have a good